Here's the thing. It's not about getting the guy to like you. It's really more about, all right, let's talk about those four beautiful behaviors that men are just going to be absolutely addicted to you. So I want to be candid with everyone. This title is a joke. I'm sorry, it's a joke. <laughs> I know I might be pissing off some people right now, but I have to say this. It's a clickbait title, okay? Um, and I say this because women oftentimes won't search for terms that will actually benefit them in their lives. They oftentimes are searching from a, from a, um, from a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? D doing searching on relationship stuff. And it's always about how to pretzel themselves for men, how to pretzel themselves for men. And I know this because so many of you women say to me, well, Jonathan, why aren't men doing this? Why aren't men listening to you? Why aren't men making all these changes? I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. I think part of the challenge is, is that the real content content you would be should be listening to you're not because you don't like the titles but you you hear this title and go okay great another way that I can get my guy to like me here's the thing it's not about getting the guy to like you it's really more about you deciding if you like him it's really for you to decide is is he really compatible with me that's some of the questions you should be asking yourself does this guy have the capacity to commit to me and more so, does this guy have the relationship skills to actually be in a fully formed relationship? That's what you should be thinking about and not whether or not he finds these traits beautiful in, with you, with, in, within you, okay? At least that's my perspective on all this. But if I gave, if the title was different, you wouldn't have clicked on it. So we're gonna start with, we're gonna tell you what you wanna hear, but we're gonna give you what you need, okay? So I want to lean into this conversation because it's so important to actually choose partners in the early stage of dating that you actually are compatible with. That with, a, as I said before, a man that's capable of committing and more importantly, a man who has relationship skills because the vast majority of human beings have terrible relationship skills. If you're not familiar with my, I'm going to show two charts really quickly. This is my emotional maturity relationship skills chart, okay? Now, by the way, on the bottom here, it says this is not a fact, this is opinion. But roughly, I believe roughly 20% of the population has clinical issues that makes it very difficult for them to actually be in a healthy, happy relationship. Doesn't mean they can't, but it makes it very difficult. Now, over here, I say 20% of the population is emotionally healthy and has good skills. I'm being ridiculously generous when I say that percentage. Because as you can see here in the middle, it says dysfunctional is about 60%, and that's probably closer to 65, 70%. I'm sorry to laugh, but it's the truth. How do I know this? Why do 50% of marriages end up in divorce? Why do the other half of people who are married are miserable? Why are couples therapies offices booming? Because human beings weren't taught how to be in a healthy, happy relationship. I'm gonna repeat that. Most human beings were never taught how to be in a healthy, happy relationship. In fact, we've, we've, most of our patterning has been based on what we, we perceived our parents were, if we were lucky to have parents, because many people weren't. And a lot of times people have witnessed dysfunctional relationship with their parents. And guess what? That bleeds onto us, that imprints onto us. In addition, and this is the most important thing I want to say, most human beings are completely clueless to the following understanding that chemistry does not equal relationship success. Let me repeat that chemistry doesn't equal relationship success. And yet most people are hyper focused on chemistry and romance in the early stages of dating instead of the more important things. And if you're not familiar with my relationship iceberg, most of you are, I want you to see above the waterline says the word attraction and you can see the tip of the iceberg is chemistry. Below the waterline, what does that word say? It says compatibility. What does compatibility consist of? Shared values, blendable lifestyles and emotional maturity. What I've been talking about, emotional maturity and relationship skills. So ladies, I'm, I'm, I'm here to say, stop focusing on all the ways to be beautiful with, for a guy and start learning the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. 
And I know, some, by the way, I know many of you don't agree with me. You have a completely different perspective perspective on this. And yet I'm here to say, why is the dating process so dysfunctional? Why are relationships so dysfunctional? It's because most people, you know, some, I'm going to pause for a second. I've observed that dating today, especially for midlife, and this is particularly for those who aren't actively looking for someone to make babies with and start a family with. But most people in midlife, there's two types of people that are dating. Those people that want to grow with someone or those people that just want to spend time with someone. I'm repeat that. Someone who wants to grow with someone and someone who just wants to spend time with someone. And here's the challenge. Whether you're a man or woman, probably 90% are operating from the, I just want to spend time with you. Now, I know women have a propensity to want commitment more so than men. Okay, you might want, but not necessarily to grow with a guy. A lot of times you might want commitment from a place of codependency, but not from a place of growth. And this is why I'm, I, I hugely, hugely emphasize over and over again to understand the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship if you want to grow with someone. And before, as I always say, the penis goes inside the vagina, you should be purchasing the book Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. This teaches you the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. In other words, what I mean by the mechanics, it, it sets you up with asking the right questions early on to determine, does this person have relationship skills? Do they even want a committed relationship? Are we really compatible with one another? And what was the third thing I said here? Oh, I forgot to include this. And most importantly, that he's into you, right? So you want to, I'm going to assume here for a second, you want a guy who um, is compatible with you, who, um, who wants commitment, who has good relationship skills, and who's into you. So I get that the chemistry is an important piece. I'm not discounting that. I'm just here to say romance should be reserved for when you're in a relationship and not as a precursor to get into a relationship. This is why my narrative is quite a bit different than most everyone's because it's more, most coaches focus on the attraction piece. The, the, and it's a misinformed attraction piece because a lot of rhetoric out there tells women to just sit back in your feminine energy and the guy is gonna claim you. Well, let me just tell you this, when you're dealing with a dysfunctional population, relationship-wise, I don't mean that people can't pay their bills and get to work on time or whatnot, I'm talking about within a relationship, then it's going to require looking at it from a different perspective. And that's what I'm offering everyone here today, is to look at a different perspective. So these four beautiful uh, behaviors I'm going to share. And let me just say something to everyone. I get that uh, it would be great if men were watching this. Let me just say this would be, and by the way, more and more men are watching my channel. I just saw earlier that someone uh, in the chat box is a guy, so that's good. And I'm saying this because I'm a big believer of men learning relationship skills as much as women. It's just that women tend to purchase the relationship books ninefold greater than men. So here's the thing, you already have this wealth of knowledge I'm here to encourage you to lean into being, to lean into, how do I want to say this? Leading by example, leading by example. That's what I want to encourage everyone to do. Okay, so we're going to jump into those four behaviors in just a second. So I'm going to put on my trusty glasses. I actually got to clean my glasses really quick. I'll show you my notes, bump, bump, bump. Um, and by the way, uh, the guy who's in the group just said amen to all the ladies that are reading these books. And well, I'm, I'm glad he said that because, again, leading by example is actually how you're going to bond with your guy. And quite frankly, it's a better approach. Rather than creating the expectation that he knows what he's doing, operate from the place of you are in charge of your relationship destiny. And look, I wish I could be there for you on first dates. I'm your big brother. I wish I'd have the shotgun out there pointed at his nose and say, what's your intentions with my little sister? I wish I could do that for you. I want you to do that for yourself. That's what I want to encourage everyone, which kind of leads into our first of the four behaviors. And that is, I'm, and by the way, everything I'm about to share here is going to be use the word mutual. So 
I want you to start with mutual attitude. And what I mean to say is, start acting like a guy. Start acting like a guy. And what I mean to say here is, men don't traditionally give their power away to a woman in relationship. Not always, but most of the time, men don't give their power away to a woman. And yet, sadly, women continually give their power away to men. You continually, it's always the relationship is predicated on, on his terms, okay? Now, the minute you make it, it's, oh, it's about his terms, then all of a sudden you're behind the eight ball because he's never going to do it the way you want it to be. And he's operating the way he wants to. So I'm here to say to adopt the, 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 the mindset that you are in charge of your relationship destiny and you never give your power away to a man. This is in essence what I talk about in my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? By the way, links to all the books I recommend are listed below. This is a journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work so you can actually love yourself to the point where you're not actually giving your power away to a man, okay? And that's how, and by the way, since men don't necessarily give their power away to a woman in relationship, and what I mean being by giving their power away, expecting the man all the con to, to call all the time, expecting the man to plan all the dates. You know, if the man is upset in the relationship, it's all about why he's upset instead of looking inward. These are just examples. When the relationship is over, you oftentimes focus on what's wrong with the guy, what's wrong with the guy, what's wrong with the guy, instead of looking inward and saying, why did I choose this person? Why did I choose this person? You know, looking inward, looking introspectively instead of focusing on guy is how you maintain your power. So mutual attitude of don't give your power away. Now, believe me, there are plenty of dysfunctional men that give their power away. I get that. But listen, sadly, here in the United States, most humans are suckling on the nipple of, I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I'm gonna repeat that. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me. I need you to validate me so I can feel good about myself. And I'm here to say, start operating from the place of, I feel good about myself. I have my power, my self-worth, my self-confidence, my self-esteem, my self-reliance, because that is a very attractive and addictive quality to have in your life. Number two. I call this mutual mental foreplay, mutual mental foreplay. What I mean to say is a relationship, the dating process today could use a kick in the butt with flirtation, with cockiness, with being brash, being sexy, being bold. You know, and this, this starts by in, even in the flirtation using our devices. And I mean, and being a little bit, you know, a bit cocky is okay. It's actually very attractive. It's a very, by the way, ladies, admit it to me, you're attracted to cocky, confident guys. Well, it's the same for us men. We do like that flirtation, that boldness, that brashness, that sexiness, the flirtation. So start, be, you know, and I know it's difficult because, listen, folks, it's incredibly difficult today because we're meeting total strangers. We're meeting total strangers. We know so little about them, and because of this, emotional intimacy isn't being built these days. I'm repeat that. Let me reframe that. Emotional intimacy isn't being built, which means emotional safety isn't being experienced. I'm gonna repeat that. Emotional safety isn't being experienced. Do you know what emotional safety is? Is being in a relationship, trusting that that person cares as much about your feelings as you care about your feelings yourself. I'm gonna repeat that, that's emotional safety. When you know that you're, that's trust basically. When you know you're with someone who, who's, they, they care about your feelings as much as you care about your feelings. So isn't it fascinating how quickly people will have sex and they won't know each other's last names, they won't know each other's birth dates, they don't even know each other's favorite colors. We know so little about people and this is why I'm leaning into this and this is why I've been lately talking about the book talking to strangers, how to get to know the people we don't know. Folks, let me just tell you something. It requires, listen, 
Chemistry and romance isn't going to re equal relationship success. What's going to equal relationship success? Emotional intimacy and emotional safety. And, and that means it's time to be radically honest with one another. This is why lately I've been recommending the book by Robert Masters called Emotional Intimacy. By the way, both these books I recommend, these are tough reads. These aren't easy reads. You may want to get the audio version of it. But it's because of a lack of depth that oh, many of these relationships are fizzling out because it's hyper-focused on attraction and chemistry and not enough building the heart space. This is why I've been, I recommend this book over and over because it throws out the bullshit gender rhetoric and starts to talk about how to date from a heart-centered space. And this is why I recommend if the Buddha dated, if the Buddha dated. By the way, check out the links below. Okay. Number th and by the way, what I'm about to share next is exactly from the book, If the Buddha Dated, and it's what I call mutual effort, mutual effort. You know, the dating process expectation is the man is the leader of the dating process, okay? Let me just tell you this. To men, that is draining. That is exhausting when it's always the man initiating text messaging and man initiating planning dates and, and whatnot. That's exhausting and draining to men. This is why a lot of men begin to breadcrumb because the expectation is all on us. I'm here to invite mutual effort. And I got to tell you, mutual effort is addictive and sexy and um, attractive. I've shared this story before. I'm going to share it again. This is an example of mutual effort. I was on a date some years ago. We went to a dive bar and I paid for the first round of drinks. And when it was time to pay for the second round, uh, she reaches for her credit card and hands it to the bartender. And I go, no, no, I got it. She goes, I got it. And I go, no, no, I got it. And she goes, I got it. And we got into a little pissing match, okay, for fun. I mean, it wasn't for fun, but I mean, that's what happened. Now, a lot, now, because my traditional upbringing said I have to pay things, that's the way I was taught, okay? That's the way I was raised. So what she did next blew me away. She put her hand on my arm and looked me straight in the eye and said, Jonathan, I really appreciated you treated that last round. Would you allow me to show my appreciation by treating you because you're worth it to me? Can you receive? I, I mean, I was in shock. I was in absolute shock, what she said. I was floored. And in that, I, and then that moment, I said, wow. This person could be a partner in my life. And while it didn't work out because we had other differences, what I appreciated most was the effort. You know what? Making mutual effort, and it doesn't have to be tit for tat, and it's not about paying for dates. It's about looking at each other's life right from the very beginning and making mutual effort. I, I, what did I write down here as another example? Um, uh, anyways, I forgot. Uh, I, I had some notes here and I forgot what it was. But I'm, my point is mutual effort. Because here's the thing to build that intimacy, to build that deeper connection. And by the way, that effort could be he's paying for the dates and you're initiating the emotional intimacy. That's a balance in effort. Okay. I'm here to say most men don't know how to connect to their heart. It takes a woman for a man to connect to his heart, and that's what I'm inviting you to do, making mutual effort instead of leaning back in your feminine. By the way, most folks know I can't stand that, and it's because that feminine energy coaching to me is princess energy coaching, and it just sets you up for failure in the long run, especially if you're in midlife. It can set you back, and thankfully, many of you have been saying the same in the comments. Okay, number four is what I call mutual adoration, mutual adoration. By the way, did you notice I use mutual in all this? Because I'm not making this one-sided. And mutual adoration in particular in each person's authority in life, in each person's authority in life. So let me give you an example. Whether I'm an authority or not, I am actually a very successful dating and relationship coach. I'm probably in the top 5% in the whole country. Uh, and I'm, I'm basing that probably on income. And there's probably people that make way more than me. And 95% of people make no money. By the way, all the dating advice out there, the, the dating coaches you watch, 95% of them barely make a dollar, okay? And I'm not saying it's about the money, but I will say this, 
People who are successful at what they do tend to be better at what they do. So coming back to what I do for a living, you know, my heart yearns for a woman and goes, wow, I admire what you do. I admire your authority. I admire your confidence in what you do. And by the way, a man should be doing the same in your authority in life, whatever that is, whatever that is. In fact, I have a friend, I, I've talked about my Pilates instructor quite a bit. By the way, we are not dating. We would never date because we're brother and sister. But I really appreciate her authority because she's helping me retrain my back. And I find that incredibly attractive. So appreciate and adore someone's authority in life and their, their particular authority because that, look, at we all need validation to some degree. And so when we, when we spend time focusing on the more important things instead of criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling, and we focus more on, on appreciation on attention, on affection, on acceptance. When we focus more in that area, that's highly attractive in the long run. And that's what we'll be addicted to. So let me repeat this one more time. Mutual attitude. Start to think, don't give your power away. Mutual mental foreplay. Be cocky, be, <laughs> be sexy, be brash, be flirty. Number three, mutual effort. Don't expect, by the way, men don't have the capacity to do it all on themselves. You have to make effort, and this starts from the very first date. And lastly, mutual adoration, mutual adoration. All right, I think we covered a lot today. Um, all right, it's time to jump to our Q&A for those listening right now. Let's, I hope this content provided value. Again, I wanna say this, look it, I know these titles, are most most are designed to get you to click what i'm here to say is what's most important in your life is loving on yourself it's not about whether or not the guy cares about you what matters most is you care about you and choose men who are compatible with you that want commitment that have relationship skills and most importantly that you're into each other because the best part about being in a relationship is fucking on a regular basis so choose not focusing on the sex focusing on those other things because the sex is just the icing on the cake when you have emotional intimacy which i said earlier leads to emotional safety and when you can feel that level of trust with someone that's the kind of relationship i'm hoping that we all get to experience at some point in our lives. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this uh, live stream as I always do. First off, post a comment below if it resonated with you, have any questions, I do my best to read them all. Please share this with your friends. There's links to my coaching, there's a link to my membership group, there's a link to my Instagram if you wanna follow me on Instagram, and also my book and everything I recommend. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic trap and merit of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I wanna thank Patricia and Grace and Roller Girl and Sherry.